What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Stir Fry. It's your boy, Chef T. I'm Will the Space Kid. And our special guest today is Don Chris. What is up, my dude? How you oh, doing? Thank you for having me on the show, for sure. I'm of very course. grateful. I'm very happy being around. Yeah, we're happy okay. to have you. I know uh, you're the creator of the nightlife app called Catch App. Yes. Yeah, so I really want to know a little bit about that app. So... Oh, uh, so about ketchup. I started ketchup in 2016. That's when I really get, got into the idea of I was I was into promotions clubs. I yeah. owned a club back then. I was in college doing my first bachelor's and uh, running a couple of, you know, promotional deals, marketing and stuff like that. So I got my own club. I used to uh, have ushers that used to come to my club right. before other, you know, clients come in. So we used to use Snapchat to go live so that we can attract our most clientele, our target market, we are students. So we used to use, you know, my ashes were mostly girls and, you know, a few dudes. Then they go live on Snapchat, then other people can see where they are, then be like, oh, this place is happening. Right. You know, they end up going there. So, you know? like, tell me how the, the app works. So it's an app that... So basically, Catch Up helps you uh, find out what is happening in different clubs and bars and, you know, everything nightlife. What is happening there? Before I make that decision to go out, why don't I know what is happening? You know, just the same way how before I can, uh, you know, go on Netflix and watch a movie, I can first, you know, be see like a preview of right. this movie is about this. This movie is about you this. Can you can see know, how it shot. Have a how glimpse of, yeah. you know, what's up with the movie. So that's the same way. But for us here at Catch Up, we give you real time, you know, content of what is really happening at that very club in terms of music. Traffic, you know, uh, gender ratios of how many females male are in that very club at that very, uh, that very time so that right. the client can make an informed decision where they really want to go. Yeah, that's amazing. I think that's a super big innovation in the nightlife industry that hasn't had many innovations uh, so far. Right. Um, and it's amazing. And we're kind of definitely interested to dive into like who you are as a person too. Uh, so let's, let's take true. it back. <laughs> so obviously, you know, you didn't originate in Cleveland. No. Um, so where were you, where are you from? Uh, originally I'm from Uganda, born and raised in Uganda. Uganda is in the East Africa. Okay. Yeah. That's where I was born and raised. And, uh, I came here to go to school in Richmond university. So I transferred, went to LA, came back here. I was, uh, finally I have my brother who's here as well. So I transferred and I came to Cleveland to okay. kind of continue with school, right. but as well as I was working on my project still. Yeah. Sometime. Yeah. So, so, so what age did you leave Uganda? Oh, I just, uh, that was like, I, I've been moving. So, uh, I left Uganda like when, four years ago. Okay. Yeah. So you pretty much your whole life up until four years ago. Yes. You were, you were just okay. Wow. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. So you know a whole different environment of uh, you know uh, a new space, but uh, as an entrepreneur, as a hustler, you know uh, you always have that kind of. It doesn't matter where you are. Yeah. As long as it is something that you're passionate about, as long as it's something that you don't have to be pushed to do. It doesn't matter where you are. You're going to look for a way how to, you know, create a way for yourself. So oh, absolutely. that's that's how I look at it. I, uh, do I see myself as a stranger? Maybe, maybe not. But as long as I can find creative minds, let me put it that way. Creative minds don't really mind. It, it doesn't really matter. You can always find your way in. Okay. Yeah. So, so what was... Mm. What was e um, the part of Uganda that you were located in? Um, I was located in the capital city. It's called Kampara. Okay. Yes, that's where I was located. So, um, are there like the same similar things as like you would see in the U.S. like grocery stores and uh, grocery um, stores, life li libraries, etc. Um, okay, if I may put it this way, like life in Uganda is a is a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit different, but not that complicated. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. It's it's just a little bit of... There is too much of socialism, if I may put it. Like, okay. people are too more social than gotcha. how you may, you know, find in other places when you go. Because they are very... The country is very much diverse. Like, they have around 50, 50 languages they speak, you know, at once. You know, everyone has, like, their language. Their own so language. That's crazy. Everyone has, like, their own language. So, they have, like, an official language, which is very... Which is English. So, that's why you hear me, you know, very kind of frequent. 
That's crazy. So, so okay, so it's a place where bunch of different t- types yeah, of when, people. Yeah, uh, when when you go there, no one would be like, "Oh, where are you from?" No, because everybody speaks English, so nobody's about to ask you where are you from. Got you. You get what I mean? Because okay. yeah, there would be like a little bit of an accent. They would be like, "Okay, this accent is not from here," but they won't be like surprised, like, "Oh, he's different." No, zero. Okay. Got wow. you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's a, I think that's the difference about you know uh, when you go to Africa, about Uganda and other places you may go to. You know, because when you go to other places, you'll be easily identified. Oh, of course. This yeah. one is not from here. I mean, other African places. You know, you'll be like, okay, this one is not from here because you won't be able to integrate easily. But in Uganda, for sure, nobody cares. Like, that's how the country is. Like, nobody cares what your business is, what you're about to do. Just make sure you're making money and you're looking good. Yeah. <laughs> that's like... They are like the country is like on on the go like that's oh, what. oh yeah so it's a, so what's your what what is the most beautiful part of Uganda like if I was to go visit where would you uh, go visit I think when you go to Uganda the best part you should go to is the villages because when you get into the city uh you may be confused of the perspective of what they gave you you know you may come with the perspective of I want to see this I want to be seeing you know the plantations the animals you know if I tell you that there are there are families that own two thousand cows you may want to see that you know but you're not going to see that in the city you know there is that very excitement of you know when you go to uh when you go to a place like Arizona when you go to a place like Oregon you want to see that adventure that yeah. when you go to Sandusky Ohio I'm going to send us your house so that I can see those cattle, so that I can see those whole long range farms. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But I don't want to go to send us your Then I find tall building. Then I find skyscrapers. Then I find all these other things. It won't make a difference. But I would have stayed in Cleveland. So right, that's the, the beauty the, of it. That's the beauty of it. When when you go to Uganda, don't stay in the city. Go to the country. Go a little bit out of the city so yeah. that you can have the whole. Beauty. So yes, recommendation: go out of the city. Okay. Gotcha. Are people yeah. very welcoming there? Like you know, very welcoming. Cause you know, as long as they find that they are not going to treat you different. That's the only. That's the, that's the beauty of it. They are going to see you as as long as you, and another thing as long as you drink beer. Oh, okay, no problem. As long as you <laughs> drink, you're going to be fine. You know what I mean? You're going to be like they, they're right. going to welcome you. Very welcoming people. They party twenty four seven. That's why I was able to come up with a night. Ah, yeah. Because they party 24-7, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they work extremely hard. Yeah, they, they party at night. They work they hard. They work hard you know, day. Yes, that's like their work ethic. Like They really party hard and party hard. So, yeah. Everything goes hard. <laughs> Everything goes really hard because it's a very hard you know, country, but yeah. hard to survive. Uh, but, you know... Great country, you know. I have nothing I can say about it that is. You like, know, when you say like hard to survive, like. Uh, uh, hard to survive. What I'm really trying to dip in is like eighty percent of the country is educated. I mean, with bachelor's degrees, so but eighty percent of the country is unemployed. So, okay, so okay. you okay. coming with the, it's hard, the survival rates are so high because for you to be able to get a job, a paying job, is so hard. But everyone is educated. So okay, so it's like most of the people are educated. Okay, okay. So mm-hmm. in the United States right now, a bachelor's is becoming to have less value because more people have it. Now you just gave me a large ratio of people that like are educated and they're getting bachelor's degree. So do you, does it? But does it matter if like they have a PhD or a master's, or is it kind of like it's just hard? To yes, get a job? Uh, for you, for you. Okay, if I may put it this way, like just having a bachelor's, I feel like it's not enough in Uganda. Right. Okay. You have to add on a master's, but even when you get a master's, you have to be connected. You know, like have to know someone, stuff like that, right. so they can introduce you something. So, uh, wow. the whole country, you find it doesn't matter whether you have a job or not. Everyone has a business in Uganda. Like most people have it. Have yeah, on their like a lot of people just start their own business they and start hustle. up something. They don't stop at work at five. When they get off at five, they have something going on. When they have they are off on Saturday and Sunday, they have something going on. That's the culture. You know what gotcha, I mean? Yeah. There's no one who you know like how uh, how do you do you have something going on? No, there's nothing like I'm going home and chill. No, yeah. they are going to chill maybe at ten. 
go to a party, party, whatever. Maybe if they have something else they can do without themselves being there, maybe they have like a couple of rentals, maybe they have like a couple of whatever they have business going on, but they will have something like that. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's like the landscape of, uh, of the country. Now, I would guess the um, fast food industry is, isn't that big. Uh, fast food industry is there because there you is... You already a, know McDonald's yeah, is they, they are McDonald's. I think, yeah, McDonald's. There is KFC. There is Pizza Hut. There is... Uh, who else? Uh, I just think it's so funny that KFC uh, <laughs> is, like, in just countries, like... Yeah, <laughs> KFC is there. And it's, like, so... That one, to me is, that one, to me, is so random. But I guess it, it it's literally America. Yeah, it's, in, it's in an this. American... No, I, I think, like, uh, KFC, the way how people look at it, it's, like... Uh, it's more, it's like the Coca-Cola foods. Yeah. If I may put it, you it's know, it's the Coca-Cola foods and it's chicken keeps on, you know, growing and... Everyone loves chicken. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with like that. Something like that. Yeah, okay. take away, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, it's there and people love it. Oh, so when you got here, you wasn't surprised that it was so many fast food spots. It was kind of like you, you uh, got used to it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of fast foods gotcha. like that, okay. but uh, there was nothing really new for me. Like new, new, like oh, this is zero. I didn't, yeah. I've okay. never been, since I've been here. I've never even had KFC. No, I've never been to KFC. Yeah, you got you. You've had Popeyes, right? Yeah, I've had Popeyes. Just oh, went in. Of course, he was in that line for that sandwich, man. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody went crazy. Uh, yeah, for Popeyes. I, I did go to Popeyes when it started being crazy. I went to Popeyes very first time, you know, when I got here, or something okay. like that. Okay. But I, I like it you. better than KFC personally. I do yeah, too. I, I do too. Popeyes is good, but yeah. KFC, I, I'm not a okay, so, that. Yeah, okay. We'll so, pretty much, you know, if you're in Uganda, you need to be a hard worker. You need, you to, need be to be a hard worker. Hard worker. For you to stand out. Um, well educated and you still got a network even after you get the education right even if you have a master's degree nobody gives a shit about you yeah That's it's like, a network you know, right it's all you have work. to network you have to keep pushing that bar to find yourself you know on that brim of people really feel that you have some value addition that you're bringing to the table just because you think you're maybe whatever you think it won't put you out there. You have to have a value. Yeah. So, yeah. So, how'd you get into the nightlife? So, obviously, you said you worked in promotions and you're doing marketing stuff. And um, you kind of worked the nightlife scene in Uganda, right? For yes, a while. Uh, I was working into the nightlife scene in Uganda. How'd so, you get into that? Yeah. Uh, I was pretty much, uh, I have always been, you know, going out a little bit all my life, but party I wasn't animal. partying, but not that like the hard party, but just going out, yeah. you know, I go out, I just sit down. Uh, so I wanted to look for a way how to, you know, how best can I change this kind of industry? I was looking for an industry I can have an impact on. Uh, so as I tried so hard to look, uh, I wanted to do for, first. My first company was doing with events, you know, yeah, you know planning, planning, you know, planning events and stuff like that. I had ushers that we can, you know, give to events. Let's say there is a big company that needs people to help them service people, you know. So yeah. I would provide, you know, people service. They give me, you know, a commission. Then I pay my people per hour, per hour, whatever. So after that, I was like, okay, there must be something I can do in nightlife that I can work around and. You know, yeah. Buzz then start, Buzz started hiring me to bring them the ushers, to work for them, you know, like, if you can give us, like, just how you know, like, which other app is here. Maybe how you see Just In Time, you know, Just In Time, the employment, not, maybe how yeah, you see yeah. Indeed. Yeah. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, just in time? Yes. Yeah, how you become, like, an agent, then you uh, the company that employs you is the one... Something like that. How yeah, okay, okay. I'm, I'm kind of getting it, yeah. Yeah, so how it works, I used to get the uh, the workers for the bars and clubs and stuff like that. Then the bars and clubs pay me, then I pay the workers their commission. If right. they pay me, like, maybe uh, $50, the workers will get, like, maybe $20. I have my profit of 30 something like that. But I was like, okay, how do I make sure that this one is sustainable, that I can take it yeah, to the next level? Yeah, because you can only hustle with that for so long until you need to expand and expand something it, yeah. more sustainable. So that's how I, you know, kind of jumped into catch up. Yeah, so what's mm-hmm. what's so attract? Well, like, what is uh, appealing to you about these events, these nightlife places like what uh, is that thing that just like you're like you love it uh the most thing that i love about nightlife is it being an industry that is 
so it's a niche that is untapped when it comes to technology uh and then most of my friends have been telling me man someone is going to come and take it i was like that would be like you saying you're not going to sleep just because you're scared you're going to dream you know i'm not going yeah. to scare you know be scared talk about what nightlife is about just because i'm scared someone bigger is going to invest in my own stuff no uh how i look at nightlife i feel like it's an industry that is untapped you know very yeah. virgin and i feel like uh it has untapped data just the same way how you may look at all these other people who came into niche markets that were already established and they disrupted them i feel like there is something in nightlife that is undisrupted yet yeah so i agree i mean i don't think that the only thing that innovation wise that's happening in nightlife is the music how they hear music and how the, the lights look exactly <laughs> but that, yeah, i know, mean i don't really see much not, efficient stuff maybe behind the bar business like yeah behind the bar way. business uh i was like okay how many people how many bar owners know retention levels of their clients how many bar owners know how to retain royalty programs to give their clients how many bars you know clubs have all that kind of information the rate at which clubs close is so high that if you knew a club 2 years ago the next 2 years you may not know it it may not exist yeah so i was like what causes that how can we make sure that such a problem is taken away you know there is no that and people who own clubs they use it for the case of okay you know we can use it to build other restaurants maybe we can make it a band restaurant and make no it's a stand around its own you get what i mean yeah so how i was looking at it, i was like okay this is a niche that is untapped so anyone who can create something over it will have started another industry that Right, yeah. Right. It makes sense. Yeah, so you're so you're in Uganda working these promotional things, you're thinking about this, you're thinking about like an idea of how to innovate this mm, stuff. Mm. And then you make your move to Ohio, right? Right. Or where was your first stop? Like you, you came here to go to school, right? Yeah, yes. So you came here to go to school where at? Uh by that time that was Richmond University. Richmond University. Yeah, in Virginia. Okay. So you went to Virginia first, yes. right? So you went right there to go to school. Right. Okay. So you went there um what was your major uh by that time it was i was doing co- economics in leadership leadership in economics stuff like that okay yeah. economics oh yeah yeah I, I i was doing a bachelor's in economics in uganda that i was finishing so that that was like my most i uh, think i always just like an economist you know yeah. how i always look at things is what's the other added advantage yes i can see the advantage of going out and having fun i can see the advantage of having people come to your bar as a bar owner but what else is that bar giving me as a client and yeah what is the what is the bar gaining from that client that just came in yeah so that's a good point i mean that's how that's that's like how i came into the idea of maybe these bars are not really getting enough out of what they should get Yeah, maybe there's more there. There's, there's more maybe, there, but maybe someone the data is not. Someone is not really not looking so deep. So yeah. I was like, so you did kind of bring your economics into the idea of yes, catch up and and how to present bars with a beneficial thing. So it's not just the consumers like right. me or Will in right. the club would have. You have somebody that's like, it's also benefiting them if they. Rep- sponsor it or if they like say come check out this platform yes that make that makes sense and that's good that you could bring thing that you weren't too passionate about which is economics and bring it into some of your passion about like is entrepreneurship yes. and, and when i reached here i actually changed i went into software yeah. engineering so that i can learn the basics of technology because yeah. i was like okay as i'm telling people to develop for me these apps as i'm working so hard to make sure i can get someone a team to develop for me am i do i really know what i'm telling them because right. that's also very important as are you telling a team of developers hey look i need you to make for me a ui i need you to make for me my back end i need you to integrate like this a b c d do you really know what you're talking about no you're like you i know, know i so pick up like a I had for dummies or too something much <laughs> online reading you know too much personal reading but i really wanted to dip down in go to class and you know do my whole class right. study not because i wanted to get done and get a job in software maybe it no right you wanted but to... i just wanted the best knowledge to kind of understand what are the a to z of 
you know. I love that. I love that hustle about it because it 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 shows that. I, and I've been trying to preach this to people too. It's like people that want to that want to start a business. Mm. Do you think it's best to major in strictly just generic business? I don't think it is. No, I don't I think. think uh, me, uh, for sure. I like. I'm a hands on. Yeah. I really want to know my the details of my business. So yeah, well, like yeah. A to not like I don't want to micromanage it, but I just want to know. What well, if you it. can have a conversation with somebody, it's like RC right, so work for NASA. Okay. You know, you want somebody that whoever the leader of NASA is, you want to make sure he can integrate with the smart scientists. Or else, there's no respect. There's, there's no that's very true. communication. There's no communication, and then it's mm. just chaos. That's very true. You know, and that's like a crazy level. Look at it, but I mean, you want to know what you're getting into. You don't just want to start a business to to start a business, and and when it blows up, what are you gonna do? You don't understand the people that are working for you. <laughs> that's very true. And then it just becomes just separated. Separated, and, and then it becomes you might you do micromanage when you're at a point where you don't understand. That's very true. Because you can't because you don't understand, so you want to be involved. In it, so yeah, yeah uh, that's that's that, that that's how I, I did it, and uh, respect man, that. Dang, crazy work, you know. Uh, not knowing how to develop an app, you know. I had created a website like two of them when I was back in Uganda for catch up. Uh, so that was like where I was by the time I got here. So uh, trying to look for developers, very hard, very expensive, but trying to go to different states, doing a survey. So I went to California, went to New York, went to Washington, went to Las Vegas to kind of understand how do different cities party. Right. When I go to New York, how do people in New York party? How do people in LA party? How do people in Las Vegas party? So that I have a an overall picture of, okay. Not just one specific no location. No one specific location, because if I'm to scale, how am I scaling that very location? Right. If I'm to expand, what do, how will those people react? And what kind of features and functionalities should I include in my app for the start so that they can easily integrate with those very cities at the kind of, you know, beginning stages? So before I started the app, first did that market survey, you know, when did that very, you know, feasibility study, went to different cities, corrected my information, then, you know, uh, came back, studied it up, then how much I needed to raise money. That's another part. Yeah. Raise money to start your very project. I couldn't get a single coin, you know, I couldn't it's get tough, anyone. Man. Very tough, very harsh, but uh, you're, you're an entrepreneur. There is, you, uh, you gotta make your way. Yeah, you know, so there is no right. options for you. Like the app is going to be created somewhere. Or you gotta make your way. So, uh, yeah, that's, that was like my thing. I was like, okay, what am I going to do uh, to make sure at least I raise 30,000 so that my developers can start, you know, I got a couple of developers who are willing to jump start and start a project. How much? uh 80,000, 50,000, whatever, but I needed something to start on. So as I was going to school still, so but I'm looking for a way how best can I start? You know, you need capital. I uh, always, you know, have friends who always ask me, what should I do to start my own business? You know, I need money. I need to go and raise money. I'm like the entrepreneurs don't say that. I I don't know. Maybe some entrepreneurs who have connections, who have done something can say that. Yeah. But if you you haven't done something yet, Nobody's gonna give you any money. No, you know. So <laughs> and most of people, most people don't have a concrete, uh, flush through plan of what they want out of their business and how to expand. How many yes. years later, people just have the idea of the business. That's very true. Yeah. So that was how I looked at it, and I was like, okay, what am I gonna do to make sure that okay, I jumpstart myself? Uh, I worked over a year. That was last year. Worked at Amazon. I was working. 12 hours at night, going to school full time, mm-hmm. make sure I make my first money. The minute I made my money, pay my app for full, I was out. But I worked so hard. By the time I was like, okay, I can create an app. My app was going on, you know, I had to buy my break times. That was the time I was talking to my developers, right. you know, hey, look, this is what I need here. This is what I need here. By the time I'm getting done, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. So, but that's just a glimpse of what an entrepreneur to me feels like they should do. Like if you're an entrepreneur, look for a way, not an excuse. 
you know, you get like a billion no's. Like everyone is going to say no to you, but it's up to you. Like, is that really what, is that because, is that really what you want to do? Yeah. Is it really what you are into? Are so, you willing to, to Are you fail, willing fail, to sacrifice? Fail. Fail, 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 fail a hundred times, you know? Can you change location, geographical location and still stay with the same passion for the same dream in a different area? Or maybe when you came to America, you became comfortable and felt like maybe you made it. You know, yet I don't even feel like a ninja. I was telling my brother the other day, sometimes I forget like I'm in America. Like maybe there's something to live. I'd be like, okay, maybe I'm still in Uganda. Oh, then I kick myself up. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm in America. Makes sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. nothing really changed to me. Yeah, yeah. It was the same grind, left, right, center. I'm gonna make my thing. I will come rain, come sundown. I'm making sure my app gets there. I'm making sure. So the very first, you know, as an entrepreneur, that's what I really think. Like the very first time my app got into Apple Store, it took us like four months. For Apple to accept us when we are we are done with coding and everything, then Apple took like four months just to accept us, just to say yes to us in the loop. Yeah. So that was like okay, that was like okay. Now we have made it there. Then what? You know those stages of every stage there is a new devil. You know there is a new challenge every other stage. But as an entrepreneur, I keep pushing. So yeah, I mean, and I'm sure you get all these people that say they say no, and then they'll be like, oh. Uh, this can never be used, or you're thinking wrong. You know, I'm sure like even Facebook got that, and and all these like big things is like, what do you have to say to the entrepreneur that that um that firmly believes in his idea, and it may not be accepted right yet. You know, um, but what I what I totally believe is like as long as back at back of your mind you have like back reasons of why you're doing it what you think because the purpose of being an entrepreneur to me is like you have to enjoy the journey not the destination if you're into the destination kind of it i want to be billionaire then you're kind of gonna lost and stress yourself out but if you're enjoying every bit of it then it becomes part of you it becomes sweet it becomes you're looking forward to the next functionality working on your app you're looking forward to acquiring just one client saying Oh, I can use this. You're looking forward to getting just one user texting back. You're looking forward to those kind of small achievements. That's what makes the journey sweet. The destination, of course, down the hill. Yeah. The destination will kind of... You of get course, there. you want to be at the destination. Yeah, you want to be at the destination, but you don't want the destination right. to distract you. Yes, you want to be proud. I think you want to be present. You want to enjoy what you have to enjoy the, the process. You know, yeah. enjoy the process on your way down to the destination. Enjoy the process. To me, that's what I believe, and I believe that as long as you stay on that track, then you won't be stressed in entrepreneurship. You feel like okay, this is part of my journey. It may not come instantly, but it will definitely come. It may yeah. not come on your first project, if I may even put it that way, but definitely, as long as you stay on that. Yeah, I mean, I read, like, I read this one that. book by <clears throat> by uh, the Nike CEO mm-hmm. uh, called, it's a really good book, you might want to check it out, it's called uh, Shoe Dog. Okay. And uh, yeah, it seems like he even was like, the best part about creating his shoes was, was the whole journey of like, no of like no one believes in this like i'm gonna go prove everyone wrong i'm gonna build this thing that i really believe in i think there should be better shoes in this world like mm. but athletes like need this and then when you then you look back and you're the you're a billionaire and you're like where did all that go now everything's like so you can't do certain things you know you're in this like box yes but the whole journey was the beautiful part, you know. You miss the whole those, journey. Is you miss those late nights with the, with your team. Trust and, me. Yeah. Every day, I was. My friend was telling me, uh, "Do you love, you know, being employed?" I'm like, "I don't mind being employed, but I love being an entrepreneur. It is sweet. As long as you look at it that way. As long as to you, it is." you're looking at it as something, as your purpose. You know, you are doing it not just because you want to show off to your friends that, hey, look, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm putting yeah. on Instagram. As long as you're doing it for the sake of accomplishing something, it's going to lead you somewhere. It's going to lead you places that you, you know, may not know. So I really, I give thumbs up to every other entrepreneur that keeps on. So what does a normal 
day look like in your company between, I guess, calling people? Uh, uh, yeah, how do you start the day? Damn, a normal day in a <laughs> company. Uh, I have I have a team of four people in India. Okay. So their day is their day is night. Got you. Okay. So I have to be up at one in the night. Okay. I have oh, to wow. talk to them from one to at least uh to at least maybe three to four. Okay. Yeah, on what we have to set up, maybe an hour or two, then they have to start on working, then I will go to sleep, or maybe I will do my assignments for school, just in case. <laughs> I have, yeah, I'll, as I'm doing that, um, then as I wake up I'll, early in the morning, I will hit up the businesses. You know, when I get up, uh, if I have something to do, I will do it till like midday, then maybe lunchtime, then I will go hit up the businesses, trying to get business one, two, talk to the uh, bars, talk to the clubs, talk to, you know, see what are their responses, how best can I work with them and, you know, start working with them. Then uh, after that, in the evenings, I start calling DJs and promotion managers, different promoters and marketeers of clubs who have like pool parties, whatever they have going on. I call them, see how we can work together in the near future. They tell me what I, where, where they stand, and I introduce myself, stuff like that. So, okay, yeah. so it's, you're just like on the... So right now you're, you're just hustling to, to just make network. Yeah, uh, right now, because the hardest part, I believe, is now. This, the, people always think like, you know, creating the app and putting it out there is the hardest part. Right. I don't think that is hard. I think if you have the right people who are doing the job, you know, who are going to call it, that is not the hard part. The hard part is to acquire that very fast business to say yes to you, to get that very club to say yes to you, to get those users to download that app. So, right, to create that virus. And make yeah, that, that, that's the hardest part, you know, as long as you can, you know, creating the app, putting it in the Apple Store, that's not hard. That's not complicated. Okay, yes, it is hard, but getting users, that's yeah. the hardest part. And yeah, that's where we at right now. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's it's that process again, like the first few people, and then like once those few people, then it compounds, and then it compounds, yes. and then it becomes a lot easier. But yeah, once you get, especially, you know, bars, I feel like they're super hard to work with. Probably, you know, just in the aspect of like things have been working for them. This is how things have always been. You know, yes. there's a lot of stubborn people especially like the older bar people you know stuff like that yes um what what uh what kind of bar in cleveland have you had best experience with like just talking maybe they oh know. yes oh uh, before the whole you know the whole situation of covid went down we had had like great progress because we had like 10 clubs sign up with us so that was like very amazing and we were like okay excited and you know willing to jump in and start working we had like you know uh uh east end talking with them okay. yeah we had east like, end is big. we had like lotus working with them then we had like uh uh ivy Oh, Ivy. yeah, we had Medusa. I like Ivy Medusa. Yeah, so we had like a couple of clubs that we were really working with and they were really, you know, willing to jump on and take us on and work, start working with them. Then the whole situation happened. So that put us like on a very yeah. low because clubs spent like, you know, they just kind of opened up like a month ago. Or whatever. Right, right, right. So, they so they're just even, trying to get their business they're back. kind of still trying to get their business back as they're closing again because it's kind of being, you know, too much funny. So, but yeah, that's where we are by that time and so yeah what do you feel like is the biggest struggle coming back like we'll, we'll, having to re go, hit up these bars having to renegotiate with these bars and talk to them and convince them again or? oh yes uh one thing that I, I was uh i was looking at it as a you know as an advantage even when you know it's all crazy but i was like now bar owners wherever it is they'll be more open yeah to new ideas of how best can they get people from their houses to come back to the bars because right now a lot right. of people are you know very comfortable why should i go out i've been inside for three you know three months yeah. maybe they are used to watching their shows maybe they are so yeah. bars will be looking for different ways on how best can they get people to come back to the usual right so it out. could yeah it could so i was like okay maybe when i look at that and stay positive i can be able to work with them yes we have been able to get a couple of them to kind of you know give us a shot as we are also working on the platform to make it better so right. it can easily integrate in their systems that they already have 
So yeah, yeah, that's. I, no, I understand. Yeah, it makes sense. Like it's a good opportunity right now. You have that people could really need these, you know, and people could really uh, listen to that live DJ music and they'd be like, "Oh man, I miss going out." Like it looks like it's popping over at so-and-so yes. let's just try it come on dude let's it's perfect amount of people and you know like yes. that, that's awesome yeah it could be a great great opportunity mm-hmm. um as an entrepreneur who focused on a software and an app mm-hmm. what are some of the some of the cons having an app like um compared to like selling t-shirts or you know because it's totally different businesses yes and each has its pro and cons uh <laughs> I have a very funny story uh, that I, I believe as an entrepreneur of I have been in two areas I've been able to be the other side of where I'm selling a, a physical product yeah okay then where now I'm selling uh, I'm selling uh, a software you know yeah. something they can touch they can feel yeah. you know they just have to believe it will work for them you know what I mean so it is so hard for a so or for you as a software company. All you need are numbers to prove yourself in software. As long as you have, if they are downloads, if they are subscribers, if they are users, your business is valid. On t-shirts, all I need are not even numbers. All I need uh, make a sale. Yeah, you know, in uh, in in how you having a, a, an app, just having a download is not enough. You need to you know, be users. You need to be users. It, I, I'm, I'm better off having a million users downloading my app for free than, you know, than how someone who's selling a T-shirt, it, 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 someone selling a T-shirt is better off having 50 people buying a T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, me, 50 people paying for a, a, an app, that's not really enough. You know, 500 people paying for an app, that's really not enough. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need, you know, vis-a-vis, like you really yeah, say, yeah, okay, yeah, I yeah. need a thousand people. I need a million people to download the app. Yeah. So for the for uh, someone selling a t-shirt, he just needs maybe for him to be a very He just wants business. profit, right? He just wants a short profit. Short profit. For you, it's like the long term. It's not even about technically the profit. It's about user integration. Yes. You know, because it's like the, then, then the profits will come once the users have all developed and everyone's... Using it, using it, using it. And the cons of uh, <clears throat> of uh, of building an app is you gotta keep entertaining that user. Yeah. You you have. You can to sell a shirt and, and they'll wear the shirt. Yeah. And they wear, you never talk. You don't even. They don't again. even need to wear the shirt, really. They will just keep it as yeah. long as they have body. Yeah. You know what I mean? But for you, as long as they have that very app, you have to keep giving them reasons why that very app is on their phone. Yeah. So is that very essential? Is it essential for them to keep it on their phones? So that's the very biggest challenge of you having an application. Understand that it, it's an everyday work of you have to keep developing. You have, you're not going to say after me getting my t-shirts and putting on a logo, I'm done with selling and make profit. No, after you making an app and putting it in Apple Store, that's just the beginning. Yeah. You just need to keep on upgrading, upgrading. I have had a couple of people ask me, okay, how much do you think an app can cost me to build? I'm like, it depends how long <laughs> you want to keep that app running. Because Cause constant, right? Constant. And that's why you're up at one to four in the morning, right? To yes, talk to them to constantly it, keep it up. Constantly, before you know it, something has crashed. Before you know it, someone was logging in and you know they can't they can't reset their password. Before you know it, you know, whatever oh, is wow. going on. If you have like payment systems, something they can't pay, maybe they have taken their money from their accounts, whatever it is. An app has to keep going twenty four seven. So you need like your systems to be up and running. Yeah. So Wow, I think people don't even think about that when they say, oh, dude, I can develop this. Or I, I kind of want, I was thinking about an app for this. Yeah. I, I, but I, I, they don't see the like the amount, sheer amount of work for a free app. Ooh, that's crazy. For a free app, then, I, but, you know, that's what I was telling you in the very first place. You have to enjoy the journey. You have to be in for the long term. If you're really yeah. in for make the profit of, you know, I get it, I get my t-shirt, I put in like maybe $10. Then I'm going to set it for 40, you know, make 30 bucks. That model doesn't work with apps. No, you gotta be patient. You gotta be willing to spend a whole lot of money. <laughs> like yeah. a whole lot of money. Yeah. 
that you gotta be willing to spend because the min all you need to be right once. Yeah, you true. just need to be right once, and you're all in. You know, uh, yes, there are other terminologies when you come to t-shirts as well. But for the app itself, like software, you have to keep on improving yourself. You have to keep on, you know, making keep yourself making the user experience a little better. Interface, you know, yeah. integration. Now they have been like, okay, we need, you know, you're doing audio. What about when I want to see? Yeah, I want to see what's going on. At least show me the DJ booth. You know what I mean? Show yeah. me the DJ booth. I'm like, the DJ won't be able to use their phone, whatever. They're like, but okay, we need to pay for Can I pay for a drink? Can I use the app to pay for a ticket on the door? Yeah. You know, all those are integrations that you have to include in your platforms. And you'd be like, okay, how am I going to monetize it? Are people going to pay? Is it a free app? Okay, yes, it's a free app. But then how best how can you we monetize make money? on it? Yeah. That's another question. And those are other developments that you're making the app to make it keep running. Stuff like that. Yeah, there's so, a lot of thought that goes into Yeah, uh, so for like, for example, for like catch up, how we really want to jump in and be able to help like devo- uh, like promoters. Most of the time, you know, they have like door fees and stuff like that. Yeah. Be able and uh, be able to pay, people can pay on their phone, become royalty, you know, become real customers for a given club. Then they get like discounts. They don't have to show their ID as long as they are catch up members. They'll be able to go to East End, IV, whatever other club. When they go to other cities, as long as that city is associated with catch-up, they'll be able to enter for that city for free, stuff like that. Those are things that we want putting in process and be able to, you know, yeah, jump in and help, you know, clubs retain clients. Uh, sorry, uh, because a lot of clubs don't really see retention levels. They just see people coming right. in their clubs. They come with their out. friends or something. They're like, oh, this place packed. But have you there? retained those clients? Have you? Do you know how to retain them? You know, do you know how? Are they regulars? Are there they should be regulars? a benefit to them being regulars. Like. There should be something. How yeah. are you making sure they're not going to club? A? How are you making sure, okay, you're putting this crowd on a Monday where the day is slow? How are you making sure these guys are not drinking from home? They are coming there. Okay, yes, there are no games now to pull them for them to come and watch from your bar. What else is there? What else is there to kind of entice them? Okay, yes, you have promotions, but I'm not about to start Googling the promotions that are on, you know, that are on East End or Lotus or whatever. No, I'm not about to do that. But if there are, if it is on a given platform, I'll be on that very platform and I'll be able to. Just the same way how I'm not about to be Googling which new songs are there. But if I'm on Spotify, I'll be able to know which new songs are coming up. Right. You know what makes, I mean? Makes so sense. it doesn't mean Spotify being available, it took away YouTube. No. It just yeah. created a position of, hey, look, this is music. Yeah. If there's new music came out, if I go on Spotify, I'll be able to know, okay, this is a music, new music that is out. Same applies to when you got to catch up. You'll be able to know, okay, this is the new spot that came on. This is the new menu that is on this very place. These are their new prices. These are their new promotion. Okay, maybe today they have this kind of promotion that yeah, I didn't know Yeah, specials. They know. have these specials. Oh, I didn't want to go to Lotus today, but I think I should go to East End. Because East End, they have this very promotion of, you know, Sunday Savvy or whatever, maybe Tacos Tuesday, whatever they have going on. Right. You can be able to know from that very kind of, you know, application that bringing all yeah. those kind of, you know, uh, uh, places in one place. So, yeah. That's how I kind of look at it. Gotcha. Um, what was one thing coming to uh, to the U.S. and then uh, seeing the nightlife? What was one thing that was different? Because I'm sure there was uh, something different. One thing that was very different uh, was... Uh, <laughs> what was different? Uh, uh, one thing that was different that is still very different is uh, what, uh, where I come from, people really party hard. Yeah. they really party like they really have fun like i mean fun so one okay. thing that was different here was like people are kind of uh into themselves maybe when i went to la it was Ooh. different no i mean yeah. i definitely can agree with you yeah but yeah. here in cleveland and uh, maybe columbus people are kind of you know they'll go out for the case of you know chilling you know yeah. they go to the club and they're just raising their hands you know being right. cool whatever but in like you got everyone's like in it together they're having they're, fun they're, they're different clubs you know like they're right. bars they're clubs you know dance clubs and whatever but people really have fun you know here people are kind of uh, they're having fun, but on um, on a low note, you know, 
eighty percent of them are on their phones, you know, checking their phones, whatever, <laughs> you know. Ah, nice. But but when you go to LA, LA is different, you know. Just the same way I tell you, LA people party hard. You know, they oh, really yeah. party. In New York, people party hard. You know, like really party. Yeah, these hard. hubs like Chicago. Uh huh. I haven't been to Chicago though, but Chicago is beautiful. Makes sense. Yeah, but you know, I was like, okay, that's the that's the thing of you know you making a survey and you know doing your feasibility study to kind of find out how do different people party differently and how do you capture that very audience. Yeah. You know, so when you look at Cleveland, you'll be like, okay, the audience that is a true. It's different from the audience that will be going at maybe Medusa and maybe you know Barry House or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So those are two different, you know, two different audience. You know, Bang Theory, the people will be there. Big Bang, I think, the people will be there. That's a kind of different audience. So, but it all comes out. How do you make sure those people are coming out every? Yeah, day? how do you accommodate? Even how do you accommodate on your app for all those different types of people? So yeah. how we are trying to help them is we're trying to help those kind of people know exactly where they go. Why should I be in the mood of being at East End and you take me to, um, I'm in the mood of going to East End and you end up taking me maybe to Big Theory, maybe to Big Bang. I'm not into Big Bang. I don't want to just be sitting there and, you know, I, I just want to kind of feel the vibe, you know, I just want to be in the mix. Right. So, uh, what, what I will end up if I will end up saying, okay, let me go to East End, let me go to a uh, big, uh, big bang, and I end up not liking it, mm-hmm. and I've wasted my time, I've wasted and my money, money yeah. you know, to get there. Okay. But if I had someone to let me know, hey, look, first check out these different options that you may have. Yeah. Right. I would have made the right decision to go exactly to the place that would suit my yeah. uh, that would suit my mood in that very time. Especially with having these different promoters. Yes. Um, because different promoters have different ideals of how they throw parties. Yes. You know, and it could be a special event. Um, like oh, it could be costume night. Um, yes. It could, be, and you don't know that. You know, you go there, you waste your time going there. And you're like, well, this is not what I'm into. Or you see the Hawaiian night down the street. You're like, well, I brought my <laughs> yeah i just wanted to go out yeah. i didn't have to first you know you know google what is uh but it doesn't uh, even cut but like it's not accurate you know yes. uh, all the time that, that's it's yeah so for really, us we'll be giving you like real time insights of what is really happening in real time the music you know the insights of female to male like how many females are in the place the traffic is it crowded is it slow is it normal so if you're into like a slow night you just want to go out, maybe have a cup of mojitos or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Then we shall take you to true. Yeah, because that's like, you know, it's type of crowd. Yeah, and, type yeah. of crowd to sit down and whatever. Then if you're into like a busy night, then we shall lead you to a place where, you know, it's a busy night. Or it's a busy club. So, yeah, something like that. That's what we are really trying to help I the nightlife that's, industry. That's a super big innovation. Where, yeah. um, What do you went out of this app like what, what's your and i know we talked about like being that billionaire being the future yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's but, like crazy. what <laughs> what what is your idea of what catch app could be like what is the goal you want to get uh, to? the mission for me is to be able to help people to party uh to be able to help people live uh a full life you know i want you to be make a safe decision when you're going out a safe and informed decision before you go out. Can I do it? Can I trust my decision? Just the same way when I'm going out, I can, I know where I'm going. I'm going downtown, but I would put in Google so that I can get the best route. Yeah. So that I can make the best decision on where exactly am I going and what's the best route. Yeah. How do I max? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. So I don't have to take a route that is taking me all over, wasting my time and gas. Okay. Yeah. So that's exactly what we are trying to do with Catch Up. How can we make sure that people really love going out and having fun? They're making the, you know, the best decision, which is safe and you know, time conscious, uh, time conscious and and money saving. Or yeah, save their money so they have to waste their time. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's like our that's a good goal. that's a good metaphor though. Like you, you do type in Google to get the most efficient route, and now that we're moving in a time where everything has to be efficient everything has to be how can we allocate our money the best way how can we do blah 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 just more efficiently yes um that's a good idea because i can't tell you how many times i've wasted money going in one bar and i know will's been in the same boat a couple weekends ago you go to one bar you pay the money you go in there it's not what you expected it was 
it's not and your mood. Yeah, you know? it's not your mood. You want to go. You wanted to go to a different place. You want to go to a different place. And, and now you, you just wasted forty bucks. Just wasted and time. At the same time, so that's the thing. And uh, I buy that would be uh, in Uganda. They party till morning. Yeah, what time five, the bars go? Five, what? Five, America, six in the morning. So stuff would be going down if it was here, five. Here, they close at two. So if you're coming out at ten, if you're to move from one bar to another, you've already wasted a whole yeah, hour, you two time. hours. So you're going to another bar and it's also maybe not your thing because you're not sure where else to go. You're like, you know what? Let me head home and... You just need to enjoy your night. So we want you to maximize your night. Yeah. And maximize it in a safe way. So that yeah. we can be able to Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I uh I heard they might change it to, to four soon uh, in Ohio. They may change to what? The bar time to four. To four? Oh yeah, that would be great. That would be <laughs> good. But I don't know. I don't know. I really. don't know. That would be a lot of bad decisions happening. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> I mean it kinda of makes sense. A lot of the hookah spots have like integrated to four. I mean, so, I, mean so I, I think see, it should be. Yeah. It's like yeah, you want so. to stay up till like some nights dude, two is not Two, two is, is not, just it's, two, it's like, just maybe Kali, you know. I feel like three maybe like Maybe three. You but know. like two is just so early. It's early because you just you just get hype around like 1231 yes and you're you're at your peak and then you're like ah oh. they're playing the last I mean song. I mean it would just help the market all around like yeah cuz like you know it's it's them sometimes like say you get mandated for work but you get off at 12 you're like dang I missed it cuz yeah. cuz I got to go home I got to yeah. shower you yeah. be like and then one, now so. it's going to be 1 o'clock when I can get in my car and only got 1 hour to party yeah, but like, if it? it closed at four, bro, BG would have been crazy. And we're talking about like one o'clock. You can get in your car. You're like, I got three hours. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. You know, I'm going. It, 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 the turn up would be, you know, high. Yeah, I think oh, it, yeah. I think it would just help the market yes. of Cleveland all around. Yeah. Like, food places could stay out, um, stay up later. Oh, yeah. Like everybody would be able to get more money and just even and I mean, spend people, more money at the bars. Yeah. You yes. know? Um and I, you might not even have these people that are getting. So I know a lot of times you're at the club and you want to get drunk fast because you only got till two. Yes. Maybe people might take it a little slower. I mean, I, maybe not, but um, people might be like, "Oh, I got time. Like, I'll, I'll chill." Well, like, yeah, I there's no I rush. Count, like shot because you ever been out and you're like, "Well, I need to catch up." You know? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. already it's already midnight. It's, I gotta catch up. Yeah, you're like chugging I always, down. I always, shots. you know, going out. I always be like, "Why are you in a rush?" Because you know, I'm, yeah, I'm coming but, from the place where we party till five, six. In yeah, the we're over. So trying to catch the up. way how we drink is slow, sure, and nobody's in a rush. No, right. we drink slow, sure, and we really drink. Yeah, I haven't seen people who drink like that here because here people, you know, shut. No, 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 no. We're not in a rush. You know, go slow. Make right. sure you're making an impact on what it. Enjoy oh, those your Irish night. People, man. You know, like it's... enjoy your night. Like yeah. have fun because don't. But those are the things of uh, there are other aspects that play in that. You know, they're trying to get home. They it's time they're about to close the bar or club or whatever. So yeah, they just want to swallow it and go back home. So yeah, yeah, no, and I definitely I think that. Uh, that open till four would be a game changer. Yeah, uh, there are a couple of things, but you know, as the industry itself, like the nightlife industry itself, it is still very. Uh, it hasn't changed that much. Yeah, you know, it's still the same. People who went out maybe in the eighties, in the nineties, still similar. Trust Get your me. drinks at the bar. You pay the lady and pay the dance. lady. Dance if you can. <laughs> I, no, people no longer dance that much. I they think. don't, yeah. Yeah, they don't. Especially in America. Well, I was talking about especially America. Especially here. So I think it is people are very personal space. So if I go yes. out with if I go out with me and Will, we're, we're more looser. But like if you go out with like a small group, you only want to hang out with that small group. No. Before maybe it was like you're interacting with people. You're like you're meeting people, right? That's what bars are theoretically oh, for. Yes, yes. Is to meet people, but... I think nowadays with our phones and with social yeah, media, yeah. we're kind of getting into more of the the uh, personal, space. personal space area. You know, we want yeah. like to have fun with our friends. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, you meet some people sometimes, but it's not as people aren't as loose. If I bumped into Will no, I by accident, I was like, oh, shoot, man. Yeah. He, he might try to, to beat me up. Yeah. You know, I mean. Well, how I look at it was like uh, the idea of 
if you look at other apps like maybe if let me just give an example of tinder at first people was like i can date someone online you know uh, how can i meet a stranger and i date them so yeah. it's just a matter of openness people yeah. if you can give someone if i don't know that something exists that then i won't be able to attack it yeah but if it exists and there is it's like you telling me that you're available today i'll be able to come but if you if i don't know that you're even available then how will i come to you but uh that's why we are creating catch up so that we can create a, a, a system of nightlife that can be integrated in a way that people can easily party with other people yeah you know just the same way how i can put it in another way of before people said like uh driving strangers in my car that's weird i oh, can't yeah. do that how can i put a stranger in my car but right now everyone is doing uber that's a stranger yeah you know, no you one ever get, thought nobody ever in any photo that was a very considered concept so it's like me saying you that at catch up you can come there and meet people that you want to go out yeah in mayfield there there are a couple of girls that i'm very sure that in mayfield today today is a thursday that want to go out today but they don't have people to go out with they don't and they don't have they don't have that very very first stage of let me put myself out there that i want to go out no that's too much you know but if there was a way how you know chifty would say i'm available going out tonight anyone would be like okay where you, you, in your location you'll be able to see whatever is in your location and maybe you guys can go out yeah, maybe, you don't have to friend. date but you can be able to go out and have fun together yeah. you don't have to pay for their drinks they may pay for their drinks but <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. No, you know, it's amazing, yeah. <laughs> but you may have to go out together so it's just the availability kind of it can you create a platform that can provide that kind of situation of people can be able to hang out together just the same way how someone created a platform where people can be able to drive yeah. together even if they are strangers yeah. everyone will help create that you making things more convenient yes yeah I don't wow. want to pay for it. Tra- I don't want to pay for a taxi, but I can pay you small dollars to take me in your car. Yeah. And that is Uber. And then boom. And then that's how people make innovations. That's how people change the world. Yes, exactly. Uh, um I think that's a, a great place to stop. We learned so much, I think, about about you and and your app and, right. and your whole story. I think it's amazing yeah, to see you. your journey thank come you. on. And I can't wait to see like what expands you. I know we'll be working together a lot. Yeah, so um, we'll read for sure. Yeah, and thanks for coming, my dude. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for hosting me for sure. I really appreciate the opportunity of being here and thanks for the great platform of, you know, Yeah. trying something new and you know yeah i hope it was fun for you and I hope yeah it was to... great to open up because i'm yeah. always you know trying to i feel like you're always like hustling you know trying yeah to... i'm always you know uh trying to keep it inside so <laughs> i can keep burning myself out trying to open up makes yeah. a whole lot of right awesome. distractions so i yeah. just keep in grinding until i make that extra mile yeah i understand <laughs> that man um yeah. so where can they find the app on on all yeah on all platforms it's on android it's on um on android you just type in catch up dot live you'll be able to see it on car uh, now on so Apple. it's catch up like c-a-t-c-h right yes up, yeah just like want to make A-P-P. sure it's clear to everybody yes. we'll put the download link below yeah. but oh yeah uh, dot live so If you can't get it, you can as well get it on the website. We have an integrated website just in case you want to use your laptop. Right. And you also have a DJ one uh, yes, for Yes, for the DJs and clubs. It's just DJ stroke clubs and bars so for them to yeah. host they yeah. have to have the DJ app. So if you're a DJ out there and you're really interested in getting on um, jump starting on something new and, and hip, you know, make sure you download this contact catch app. I'm pretty sure you can follow them on Instagram and get reach out to them. Um And what's your Instagram handle? Uh catchup.live. catchup.live yeah. again at c a t c h a p p dot .live. That's right? exactly. It. Yes. There we go. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, well everyone just check it out. Really awesome thing. Really well done software. Yeah. Very aesthetically pleasing. Um it's really great. So, thank you all for listening and watching. It's your boy Chef T. I'm with a space kid. Thank you so much. I'm Don Chris. Yep. Keep it real, y'all. Hey. Thank you all for listening and joining us on another episode of the Stir Fry. All the music was created by Steve Ozell. Check him out on all streaming services at Steve Music, spelled S T three V three zero Music. Also, if you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. We'd greatly appreciate it. And see you next Tuesday when we talk with the man, the myth, the legend, Bird the Voice. 
He is a musical artist from Columbus. He talks about his time at Fresh Empire and how balancing a family is with a musical career. You definitely don't want to miss this one. So see you next week, y'all.